Welcome again to the Kitchen of the Celticator. I'm Chef Eric McBride here, and we are back again for Private Recon. And as you can kind of say, I'm already dressed up for it all a little bit here. Um, we're going to be doing some of the dishes that are traditionally done by Celtic people that would have been done out in the out with the Buccaneers. There's a lot of the Buccaneers out in the Caribbean who are actually of Scots, Welsh, Irish descent. Quite a few of them, anyway. Uh, quite a few famous ones were of, definitely of Irish and Scottish. So remember, this is the Kitchen of the Celticator. I'm Chef Eric McBride. Please go on after you like this thing to our Facebook page, The Celticator and Chef Eric McBride. Our website, thecelticator.com, for any of our cookbook spices or any information you want to know more. Or to watch other our videos on our YouTube channel of The Celticator. So as I said, we're going to be doing a lot of things for Pirate Week. We're actually going to be doing something a little different this one. We're going to be doing two demonstrations. One of them is a main course dish, and we're going to do a dessert that were done by the Celts in the Caribbean. And one of the primary ones we're gonna do is an Irish dish called a Dublin Coddle. Now, if you've ever done a Dublin Coddle, ever heard of it, nowadays it's something that, it's what you would crave at about two o'clock in the morning on a Saturday night when you're coming back from the pubs. All. But this is dish has been around and boiling over in Ireland for many, many centuries. And in fact, during the periods of Charles I and uh, Charles II, James II, and so this would have been a dish that was very, very popular, especially in the Caribbean. So because of it is because there's so much pork meat, and this has done a lot with pork meat that is found very abundant in any of the Caribbean islands. So to begin with, I've already started off with some ground sausage meat, and I've already browned it up a little bit here on my fine, and I'm going to add, now I like to go and do mine with a combination of like the packaged ground sausage meat, but I also want to add in some length that I've already cut, I've already cooked up, and cooked up to be placed together into this. So we've got all our brown, just kind of our sausage browning up, and I wanted to go and start that off a little bit. Now this dish uses sausage meat, bacon, and of course potatoes to make this nice little stew. So, you, so one of the things you want to do once you get them right about here, you saute, you want to add a little bit of our seasoning. Now we're going to use the Celticator seasoning the all Gaelic seasoning. Now all Gaelic means it has a little bit of thyme, white pepper, and garlic powder into it. Kind of it all adds to it. So we're gonna add all this in here. I like to add it now with the meat and in the fat that is right there in there right now. Because we're actually gonna add a little bit more fat to our dish here. So we're gonna get it mixed all up around here for it all. We're going to add a little bit, and all I already have here is some bacon fat, already melted down. We're going to pour that right in here. Now, there's one other thing that you can always tell somebody who's a Celtic chef or a descendant of a Celtic chef is just how much do you go and save back to get your bacon fat. So, we got all our bacon fat mixing in with all this stuff, and at this time, we want to add in a little bit of flour because we want to mix that with that fat to make it kind of a roux at the bottom. We don't want just a couple of tablespoons of bacon fat. And now we have the beginnings of our dish for it. We've got a thickening agent. Now what we're going to add in a little bit is bacon. Now you don't want to use traditional American bacon which is also known as streaky bacon. You want to do more of the British style rashers of bacon. Now sometimes all you can find, because it's really hard to find rashers of bacon in the United States, you can use pork loin. Or what I have found, if you go over to like Sam's Club or so, they have a European style bacon, which is using a lot of the pork shoulder, but it's still cured the same way. And you get these nice pieces of meat that looks very, very similar to a rasher of bacon and has the exact same flavor. So I've already cooked all this up a little bit here. And we're gonna add that right into our pot here. And we're gonna mix that all around. And then we're gonna take a large onion, actually an onion and a half, and kind of mix it together. In with that and get this all cooking on heat and while this is all cooking up we're also going to add in I've already to shorten this up a little bit uh, boiled some potatoes we're using yellow potatoes and I want to keep that nice potato water as well so we're going to add this because like I said this is a stew I'm going to throw all our potatoes in there And our, we got all our fat, we got our onions, we got our seasoning, 
We got a little bit also a little bit more garlic into it and just mix this all up in the stew and let it stir a little bit and season now while this is cooking I'm gonna put this off to the side here and let this cook because we're gonna go start on our dessert right now now the dessert is something out of our Scottish cookbook this is known as a strawberry boujolet and this has a little bit of mixture of French into it but it's how they go and do the dish and it's something that is very very popular and came directly this is almost directly from the Caribbean for it all but it definitely has a highlight of the Scottish dish so what you're doing is you're taking a bunch of strawberries fresh raised right that and we've got them all chopped up for it all and we're gonna add a little bit of water in at this moment a little water here about a half a cup of water and we're gonna start cooking that up now as that water is cooking we're gonna be adding a couple other things in one of them is Beaujolais wine and a little bit is whiskey of course now you really do need to use Beaujolais wine now not everybody knows about Beaujolais wine for it all in fact today when I went to go get the bottle of Beaujolais I'm asking Supposedly their wine expert in a place here and he had never heard of it now Beaujolais is wine is also known as Nouveau wine It's a grape that's probably out of all red wine the fruitiest not sweet Fruity flavor much fruitier than say Pinot Noir would be and that's why we want it for this dish It's also known as like I said the party wine It's a wine that's not supposed to be aged for it all and in fact November 11th of every year is known as Beaujolais day and that's where if you go to the local French restaurant where you're at, they will have imported Beaujolais wine all the way from France for that day, from that first. Now, we're in 2020. They would have had 2020s things already pressed and bottled and sent to you. And what you're wanting to drink is it's a wine that's so fresh, so fruity, but you also get to go and find out at that time how that the crop is going to be that year. How fruity, how flavorful, how deep flavored for it all. So that's where we're going with this. So we've got our water here cooking for it all, and we're going to add in our Beaujolais wine. And we're going to let that cook for a little bit, and then later we're going to add in a little bit of whiskey. Now, the biggest thing we're going to add into it is sugar. So I'm going to stir my main course up a little bit here. I don't want to get it overcooked. Turn that fire down just a little bit. Now, if you followed any of my cooking demonstrations before, you know Celtic cuisine, like many European cuisines, are not heavily into sugar. However, this one is one of those exceptions. Why is that exception? If all the European dishes, desserts are not very heavily in sugar, why is this one? And it comes back to because of where we're putting this from. This is a Caribbean dish. And it is something that is very big. It's one of the reasons where you get rum and everything else coming, because it's where the sugar comes from. So we're gonna be adding in quite a bit of sugar into this dish. What we're really making out of this is we're boiling all this down, the Beaujolais wine, the sugar, and the strawberries, is we're kind of making a 16th century, or, or 17th century, 1600s, type of pre-jello because this dish should be served cold. So we've got our all mixing together and you wanna go and keep mixing this and boiling it to the point where you get a really, really thick flavor from it all, from all the sugars that are going on in this stuff. And you're gonna go and take, let's see here, I've got it. And just kinda of keep stirring this along. Now you're gonna cook this along for about anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes for it all until it starts to get a nice, thick syrup and then at that time you're gonna add in your whiskey now if you've heard of any of our recipes before about cooking with whiskey there's some things that you need to know and it's something that's on my upcoming book uh, whiskey slash whiskey with an E Celtic cookbook is how you want to cook with whiskey because there are different rules for it all first of all if you didn't know whiskey was invented by the Irish and it's a way of making a distilled liqueur but the same way as you were making perfumes, you know, cooking it up and then letting the steam rise for and making your your liqueur from that, that kind of essence that's coming out of it, boiling down through the hash and all. Now, when you have Irish whiskey now, 
it's so perfected. It, I mean, they, that's why it's so smooth. They spoil it, or they distill it three, and sometimes even four times. And it gets a lot of those impurities out, and so it's really, really nice for sipping. It is unfortunately not very good for cooking. Primary is because you need some of those inconsistencies in when you're cooking to go and make the flavors that you want. Also, because it's been distilled three or four times, it's very, very delicate, which means adding heat to it, it'll dissipate the flavor and you won't really get the results that you're trying to look for. So in this case, we want to use something a little stronger. So I actually have a bell curve of cooking with whiskey. We start with our Irish whiskey at the bottom, then we come up to Canadian whiskey, dry, and then what I call the holy trinity of cooking with whiskey, bourbons, sour mash, and blended scotch. Each time getting a little stronger and stronger. As we come down our hill, we have a little bit of our uh, single malt scotches. And the reason why they're coming down a little bit is, is because I'd much rather go and spend $15 for the type of whiskey that I want to play for than one of my favorite whiskeys here where I'm paying $40, $60, or $100 for the whiskey. Now, the reason, other reason for it all is, is because of the other aspects that are in whiskeys for it all that you don't really want that stronger flavor. Sometimes they can overpower. So in this particular case, our blended whiskey is going to be one of the best flavors that we can add to it. Then at the bottom, we have our Isle of Isla whiskeys. And the reason why I go and say those are a little different is because like island, a lot of the island whiskeys, they're done with a lot of peat into them. They smoke the peat. That's uh, Peat is ground tundra vegetation that has been compressed from thousands and thousands of years, ice age, whatever, for it all. And it comes down and then you can compress it even more to make hardened bricks. And then when it smokes, it gives this nice aroma for all. And that's what adds to a lot of the island scotches. Now, in some dishes, if we had been making our smoked salmon whiskey cheese soup, the island of Isla whiskey, Lafroig, Arbeg, Highland, Parag, Lagavulin, those would be the best ones to use. In our particular dish that we don't, we don't want a smoky flavor, mixed in with the fruity flavor of the Beaujolais and the strawberries and the sugar. So in this case, you want to use the whiskey. Now, we're not going to add whiskey in here until we get all that boiled out. And like I said, you're, what you're going to do is you're going to keep boiling this until your volume has reduced down to maybe a quarter of what it was. It's going to be a, a thick syrupy for it all. And that's when you're going to add in your whiskey for it all. And when you get all that nice whiskey for it all, you can do two things. You pour it off to the side and then have it available. You can chill it up for a little bit and serve it as like a cold kind of, because it'll start to be almost glutinous. So you want to make almost a little jello out of this. And as I'm going to say, we're not going to be able to have time to go through all of that. We are going to come back while this is cooking here to come back to our Dublin Coddle here. As you can see, my stew is getting really, really nice here. And in fact, we're going to portion out some of this stuff. So we're going to get our nasty ladle here. And we're going to go and take our nice stew. And pour that right into my bowl here. Make sure lots of potatoes. Get some of that good chocolate stuff. But more or less, also make sure you want to get that nice, thick, the soup stew portion. If you need to add more of it. So as you can kind of see on our top view from it all, and if you can see kind of see for about them, that's our stew. It's a nice Dublin coddle. Actually, what I'm going to see maybe if we can't do this as well. I'm hold this up. There we go. So that you can all see from the what our nice little stew is going to be for all. This is such an excellent little stew. Like I said, it's everything your body craves after a long night of drinking. It's not necessarily the healthiest dish for it all, but you can imagine the crew on a pirate ship going and say, ah, this is a special stew. This is something you've come into the taverns, right? And you got sausage meat and you got bacon meat, call of pork and some potatoes thrown into a nice stew while they've been drinking at Tortuga for it all. So we have that and we have our strawberry Beaujolais dessert when it's all done it's a nice thick kind of a syrup you can kind of see it's starting to get a little syrupy now but a little bit more for that and then at the last moment we're going to add our whiskey into it pour it all 
serving it up into our little dishes for us here. And I normally like to go and chill it before I serve it all out for us. So as you see, this is what we've done for Pirate Week here. It's a nice little combination of stew and dessert, all very much that are taken from the Celtic nations of both Scotland and Ireland down the Caribbean because of some political points for it all. They were chased way down there to go and wreak havoc on everything. And in many cases, what they did was they were continuing to go and fight for the projections of the British Isles because most of the time they were fighting was fighting against the Spanish, raiding their nice gold from it all. So I'd like to thank you all very much and the people here at the Far our, our, our special event here for life for Pirates Week. And as they say in Gaelic, Slanja Fleur, till we all meet again. Thank you all very much. See ya.